Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a very interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. These are the TRM Atom in titanium. Why do you have both of them? Uh, so the story goes is that I saw the titanium version of the Atom pop up on a retailer and I thought, you know what? I think I might like that knife because I had handled one of the uh, base versions in G10. And it was okay, but I thought maybe I would like a lot more in titanium. So I went ahead and picked this guy up, and uh, which I really liked. I unboxed it, and you guys may have seen that uh, video. And then TRM reached out and said, hey, listen, we think based on your preferences, you would actually really like the diamond texturing that we do, which is this guy. I did not know that this existed, but a ton of you guys kept saying, why didn't you get the diamond texture one? That's the one that we feel like you would like. So, so they said, why don't we send you the diamond textured one and then you give the other one away, which is something I will absolutely do once this channel hits uh, 300,000 subscribers. So thank you very much to TRM for doing that. That was really, really cool. I do like the diamond textured one <laughs> quite a bit better, uh, though the, pin tri the pinstripe textured one is definitely nice. We're going to get a close look at uh, both of them. This is absolutely more my style. I have had this thing in my pocket pretty much nonstop for the last week and a half or so. Uh, and so I've got my thoughts collected and I'm going to share them with you guys. I'm going to link these knives down in the description. There is a wide range of pricing. I'm going to tell you guys right now, as far as I can tell, the base version of the Atom in just flat G10 scales comes in at $210. Uh, and then obviously the price goes up if you want like contour, or you want micarta, carbon fiber, stuff like that. Uh, and then the base price of the titanium models comes in at $365 for smooth non-textured titanium or $385 for the textured titanium that you are seeing here. Obviously, there's a huge price jump when we're talking about titanium, especially considering that these are uh, manufactured in the USA and they are not mass produced. This is still a small production shop. So that has to be factored in. Thanks again to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I'm going to bring this guy back, but we're going to start here with this guy. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2? I would call this a full-size knife. It's just very, very compact. The carry experience with this thing is this knife is big enough to remind me that there is a knife in my pocket, so I'm not going to like throw my pants in the washing machine and be like, whoops, my knife is in there. But it carries so comfortably. It's very, it's very thin and very compact when it folds up. Uh, but you can see uh, that uh, out, uh, and you know, it probably would help if we measure it first. Did I, did I do that? I don't think so. This knife comes in overall at about eight and an eighth by my measurement. Blade length is three and a half inches, and your cutting edge comes in at three and a quarter. It's not quite the same size as the Rat 2, but definitely larger than the Rat 1. How about up against the Demco AD 20.5? There we go. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3 and the Spyderco PM2, which I should probably have deployed and ready to go. All righty. Very, very close to the same overall size as the Spyderco PM2. And then last but not least, let's put it up against the Benchmade Bugout and the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. This is kind of like, I mean, it's not exactly the same, but it's that thin and compactness of the Bugout, but stretched out to be about the same length as the Ritter Hogue, um, which is something that's very pleasant. At times, the Bugout feels a little bit too small, though I do enjoy carrying this titanium Bugout. At times, it feels a little too small for me, not because I need that long of a blade. That's just my preference, right? Um, so yeah, there you go. All right, so how's the action on this guy? So these run on phosphor bronze. And uh, this thing has uh, broken in really well. I did not oil it. I wanted to see how well it would break in. Um, one of my first complaints with this and the last one that I reviewed, and I can't—I honestly cannot remember if it was an atom or a, a, a neutron, um, but I thought, why is the thumb stud like so sharp? You know, when people point out, they're like, hey, you can put little O-rings on there. And I was like, yeah, well... Like uh, they should, they should texture it from the factory, or they, they should include the O-rings. Uh, I mean, I don't know. That would be cool if they included the O-rings. It would be cool. But I went ahead and paid for the O-rings, which uh, I, I bought them separately. And they're, they're like nothing, you know. It's, you get like six of them in a package for like four bucks or something like that. It's not really that big of a deal. 
Um, and I slipped one on there. And boy, does that make a difference. It's not that you can't deploy it unless you have the O-rings on it. You can. It's just the shape of this stud is not, you know, it's just kind of like a pillar with a coin on top of it, you know. But man, that the O-ring really does make a difference. If you're wondering why I didn't put one on the other side, if you put one on the other side, the way that the titanium is machined, it kind of bumps into it. Now, it's still, the blade absolutely does nest completely, but it doesn't, it doesn't click the same way. It kind of goes, and so there's a couple of reasons for this, but I, I kind of wish that this side was milled slightly lower to accommodate for people who want to put the O-rings on both sides, but honestly, just people who are going to deploy it with their left hand in general. And I'm not talking specifically about left-handed people. I'm talking about people who are right-handed and need to switch the knife to their left hand and then want to deploy it like this. Because man, the combination of this being machined so close to the stud and the the stud being shaped the way that it is without the O-ring, it's not super comfortable. Uh, you can get it, and you can also reverse flick it. And it's honestly, I mean, maybe the meat of this finger is a little less sensitive than my left hand one, uh, my my thumb on my left hand. Um, you can do it. I just really wish that I could have O-rings on both sides, and I, I really think that this would accommodate um, for lefties better, especially if we had a mounting position for left-handed people. We'll talk more about that. But that's really my only gripe. As far as the action goes itself, wow, it's really good. I mean, you can see here, what's that? This is this is running on washers. Oh, boy. Um, it's just gotten better and better and better. Um, it, it is insanely comfortable with the O-ring. And the access on this side is really good. Look at this. That's beautiful how they carved that out there. Man, every time it is just a purely organic deployment experience which <laughs> sounds, that sounds a little intense, right? Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's very, very good. I have no complaints uh, about the action uh, when it's being deployed as intended. Let's go ahead and do carry profile thickness up against the Spyderco Pair 3. This is a thin knife. Length and height up against the PM2 and Pair 3. Uh, this is not going to be a problem in the pocket. It is slightly longer than the Pair 3, not quite as long as the PM2, nowhere near as tall as either, and nowhere near as thick. Uh, it is a very, very compact knife when folded up. The shape of it is just, you know, very friendly. So materials, what are we looking at here? We are looking at, I wanna get my magnet out. The liner itself, Boy, it, was I wrong about the liner? Guys, I think I was initially wrong about the liner. I want to look in here because um, I don't think they have an insert in there. No. I believe that liner is titanium. Uh, at least the magnet is just not wanting to stick to it. And I know that that's not like, you know, just because the magnet's not sticking to it. To yeah, but in the case of knives, though, right, that's generally the case. I think the liner actually is titanium. I, I didn't know that up until this point. I just assumed it was steel. And while we obviously have uh, titanium scales, and these have not been milled out. Well, they have to, you know, accommodate for the liner. I wonder if the liner on the other side is actually steel. I'm not getting any. And you might be wondering, why do the titanium scales and then do the liners titanium? Why don't you do the whole thing? The idea is, we'll get back to materials here in a sec, is that you can just it, it, it's very, very easy to take the screws off and just swap the scales out. So if, you, if you're like, oh, I bought it for titanium and I love the titanium, but, you know, I'm feeling like maybe uh, yellow micarta or something like that. You can actually buy the scales off their website, which are pretty well priced. I mean, this, you know, we, again, we, you have to consider like this is all one small shop and they're making all this stuff in the USA, right? This stuff, the vast majority of, of what's being used here is manufactured in the United States, Right. Uh, and their availability versus years ago when these things were just like, holy crap, you can't even get them. It's actually not bad. The other day I went to the website and took a look around and there were a few versions of both the titanium and the G10 slash micarta versions just sitting there. Uh, and they had a bunch of different scales available too. And I would imagine availability goes up and down just like everything else. But you can get these scales and switch them out and it makes it really easy because the liners fit into the titanium scales the same way that they do the G10 and micarta, carbon fiber, etc. I believe it's the same way. It doesn't really matter if they are the contoured scales, which are a little bit more, uh, or the flat scales. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, it, that would make sense. I mean, it's like I said, the magnet's not sticking to it. So I have to assume that the liners are also titanium. So there's quite a bit of titanium here. 
Then we have CPM 20 CV for the steel. They're truly keeping it uh, USA. CPM 20 CV is made by Crucible, which is located in the United States. So there you go. Obviously, the carbon fiber micarta and G10 versions will weigh less than this, but this titanium version, wow, it's actually shocking that it comes in at four ounces. That blows me away. This knife feels like it weighs sub 3.5 ounces. The entire thing just doesn't feel heavy. I, I'm, I am mind blown that this actually gets up over four ounces in tie. It just doesn't feel like it's that heavy, but okay, there you go. My carry experience with this is that it was uh, like approaching featherweight. It's I think it's just how thin and compact it is when it's folded, right? So there you go. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'm going to get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use in this channel. This new bit with the it's a T8. I can just barely see it though. So we have a T8 pivot. No, that's that might be wrong. Hold on. I just assumed, but let's take a look here. Let's do a T10. Is it a T10? Uh, yeah, it is. We got a T10, and then we got some T6 screws right here that are holding in uh, the liners or holding the scales to the liners. Um, and then the underneath, I would imagine that there are additional screws uh, holding these standoffs in, but they very well could be floating. In any case, it's really not that big of a detail to me. Um, because that's only if you want to do a complete disassembly, right? If, if that's the case, then you got some extra screws to take out, but the overall construction of this knife is very simple and very purposeful. It's designed to be that way, whether you want to break it down completely or swap the scales. I think they knew that the vast majority of people that want to take these things apart are probably going to be taking them apart uh, just to the point where they can swap the scales out, and they've made that part extremely easy. Most people are not regularly tearing down their knives, um, so yeah, you know, in, in any case, uh, as long as you've got the right tools, it should be a pretty easy process. I really can't fault them for any part of this. Uh, and then we also have some T6 screws holding in the pocket clip. Wish they would use T8, but it's like I always say, it's a preference. It's not a deal breaker, right? Um, let's go ahead and measure the blade stock thickness. I bet you can guess, uh, the blade is pretty thin. Um, let's see here. Blade stock thickness coming in at 86, probably 85 thousandths. Very, very thin. You guys know that I love collecting hilariously overbuilt knives, right? So a lot of people assume that the concept of a practical utilitarian folding apparatus is lost on me. Nope. Um, in fact, I, I don't know. I feel like an eight-year-old understands that, you know, like a thinner blade passes through material more conveniently than a thick blade. Uh, as far as using a knife goes, I'm going to prefer, you know, uh, when it comes to just straight up utility and, you know, the ease of completing the task, right? Uh, yeah, I'm going to prefer a thinner blade as long as, you know, the composition and geometry sort of, you know, balance each other out for the task, right? So for day-to-day -day normal stuff with a knife, right? And I'm not talking about like prying the wing off of an airplane, uh, or whatever. This blade is fantastic. It passes through material like a laser beam. The final cutting edge is just beautiful, right? Uh, this is the kind of thing that I enjoy using day to day. I mean, it's not that I don't enjoy using knives with thicker blade geometries just because I enjoy the look of them, right? But when it, when it comes to convenience and just being practical, this works really, really well. You're sacrificing some durability, but that's one of those things where you have to ask, Sacrificing durability in what scenario? What scenario do I need a thicker stock, right? And in, in most scenarios, the answer is use a fixed blade. And I would venture to guess in most, most scenarios, right? If we were there, if we were a fly on the wall, you could easily say, this guy's using the wrong tool in general. But uh, people are not usually willing to admit that. Um, but anyways, <laughs> 20 CV titanium, titanium, that's what we're looking at here. Uh, and uh, 85 thousandths, roughly, of blade stock. 
Um, I think that's pretty much it. Let's move on into the meat and potatoes here. My goodness, is this beautiful. I think the standard, I think what, you know, it, it all comes down to preference, but the standard version of this just looks so plain to me. I was just like, eh, it's just kind of knife, right? Now, uh, you know, I've reviewed the shadow. Um, the shadow was the, you know, the one that looked, that was different to me. It looked different. It just, the whole thing was just more interesting. And I got to see their texturing, their ability to texture titanium which I did not know that they <laughs> could do it at that level. I mean, like this level of texturing is something that we don't usually see on knives that are anywhere near this price range. I mean, this is this is expensive. You guys heard me say the price at the beginning. Yeah, it's expensive. Usually this level of micro texturing is not something that we see on USA knives at this in this territory, right? We see Rick Hinder do some texturing. We see some other companies do some okay stuff. But a lot of times you see the um, companies who, you know, their stuff is quite a bit more expensive. Um, and you're seeing this, this level of machining. This, uh, look how this, it's, you know, like the, the diamonds are a bit bigger here and then they sort of taper down and, and they keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. My God, that is just absolutely beautiful. Every time I get this knife out, I have to stop and look at it, right? And these aren't sharp. There's enough texturing there that, that it's beneficial, right? I mean, you're, you're actually gaining meaningful traction here, but it's not sharp to the point where it's like, you know, shredding your fingers like cheese. This uh, pinstripe texturing is also, it's so fine. Really, really beautiful. You know, there was a time where I was like, do I want to give this one up? You know, and really the, the diamond texturing is more like what I like, but there are going to be plenty of people watching, looking at this saying, that's what I prefer. And this is a newer texturing and apparently they've been doing this for a bit. They also offer it, like I said, in just a plain, um, you know, like smooth titanium uh, that's contoured. And I think maybe even, do they, do they do them flat? I'm not really sure. If they do, maybe it's a little bit less. It's important to point out, this is something that I learned from transparent knives. The, the, the equipment, the machines required to um, not just texture, but contour titanium are absurdly expensive. This is something that, you know, there, there are plenty of people who like spend a little bit of time in the knife world, right? And I'm going to, I'm going to preach to you guys now that I learned something, I'm going to pretend like I know everything now. <laughs> you spend a little bit of time in the knife world and you just get this general, very simple, uh, it, you know, I think that, I think our brains are hardwired to reduce everything to as simple as possible. Like it's, it's just easier for us to view things as simple as possible, right? Um, but in their heads, it's just like titanium should cost X amount and 20 CV should cost X amount, right? A lot of times, even worse, they base that on what they've seen from the Chinese market, which is, you know, you, you got to factor in labor costs. So that goes out the window. But so, you know, people just automatically assume all titanium is the same. It doesn't matter if it's flat or contoured or textured, whatever. It's just titanium. No, absolutely not. We have to factor in USA manufacturing, small batch USA manufacturing. It's also contoured and textured. The machines required to do this are not cheap. They're so expensive. I had no idea up until here. Transparent Knives, you know, explained it to me. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's, really, it's really kind of spectacular that um, they're able to even get it to this price. Um, let alone, I mean, like, I got to focus in on the fact that these are wonderfully executed. They're just beautifully executed. Both of these are exactly the same. There's no difference between either of them when it comes I mean, like their consistency is clearly very, very good. Um, so I'm, I'm just really, really impressed by that. Um, and I think that their spacing on their pricing is also very good. I think it makes sense. Uh, it's, it's, it's rare that I look at stuff, you know, especially now in 2023. I'm so glad that I returned to look at these things, knowing a little bit more, understanding the company a little bit more, and just knowing a little bit more about, you know, what it costs to make something like this in the United States now in 2023. I'm really glad that I returned because I, I think this is some of the most, um, amazing like this is one of the best examples of usa manufacturing at a reasonable price in the knife world that we have out there um it, it really is pretty spectacular the blade is a simple just elongated drop point blade some people might say spear point okay that's fine we got a nice slight reflectivity on the tumbled finish there 
We've got the logo, and on the other side, it just says TRM USA 20 CV. It doesn't need much more than that. I don't think the logo is really taken away from anything. It looks very, very good. How are the ergonomics? Holy crap. Um, you know, a lot of the issues that I have with thin knives is that it just really doesn't feel like it's filling the hand. It doesn't feel like there's enough there, and the edges kind of dig into my hands a little bit. This is contoured just enough, and the edges are absolutely knocked down enough to where the entire ergonomic experience is very, very pleasant. I find myself wanting a little bit of jimping up here, but the fact that it's not there isn't a deal breaker. Being able to lock in on that very subtle curvature, kind of like through this area here and out, you know, where it's basically like a large sharpening choil, kind of shaman style, but without the nub. Um, being able to choke up right here is really nice. This whole handle is so roomy. I mean, you really can, if you want to choke all the way back in a four finger grip, you got quite a ways to kind of move around. You can go here, you can go here. I like that. I, I like it when knives kind of let you put your hands where you want. You're not forced into a certain spot. Ergonomically, it's very good. Access to the liner lock is also extremely good because of this cutout here. Again, I kind of wish the entire side over here was carved out, excuse me, a little bit uh, lower so that you would have better access to this. And when the detent engaged and this thing came down into the, I'm sorry, not the detent, but when it you know engages the stop pin back here, I wish we had a little bit more room so that the O-ring wasn't getting mashed up against the... Um, up against the frame. I think that would make it easier to deploy with your left hand and it would not be so mushy. I also feel like um, a really good move for them, because these are right-handed only, instead of milling another slot into the tight, because you know somebody pointed out, somebody was like, yeah, tell us that you want a uh, slot milled out for lefties right there. Tell us that you want them to ruin that beautiful pattern down there. <laughs> <laughs> People knew that I wasn't going to be able to admit. <laughs> you guys got me there. I would not want them to mill out a uh, chunk of titanium right here to accommodate for uh, a lefty position, you know, a lefty mounting position. What I want them to do is, um, and I think that this would be difficult given that how they construct this. There's, they've, they've got to mill pockets in these scales to accommodate for the liners. But it, ideally, both of these scales would be solid titanium, and then you would have a slot milled into the titanium so that the pocket clip could nest inside of it or be flipped over to the other side, so you wouldn't have pockets. But they they can't really do that, right? So, you know, it's like I'm sitting here as a reviewer, and I'm like, I wish that these, you know, were... I wish that these were lefty friendly, but they're not. But I also don't know what they could do, right? So it's one of those things where I'm just like, make it left-handed, but I don't know... <laughs> I can't suggest anything. I think maybe they should just make left-handed versions of these, which I don't normally say. Normally, I say there's all, there's always a solution to make them accommodating for left-handed people. In this case, they might not because they've got a good thing going on here where they, you know, make the scales easy to swap out. I think that's um, really good, you know, for, you know, setting it up so that you have repeat customers. But at the same time, it's very accommodating for, you know, the typical knife enthusiast slash user who's interested in these knives because they're going to want to carry and use these things, but they're also probably going to want to swap the scales out every now and then, right? And the prices are really good. They've made it really easy to swap the scales out. And it sounds like their availability is decent, right? So I don't know that, you know, changing up the liners to accommodate for lefties is a good idea. I think that maybe just manufacturing some left-handed versions of these would be a good idea because... I'm certain that left-handed people would be interested in these, right? Now, that's a massive cost on their end. It's not like they can just rub a magic lamp and start making left-handed versions. There's a lot involved with that. But I think it would be a really, really good idea. So, there we go. Uh, yeah, manipulation. Ease of manipulation is very, very good as long as you're deploying it, you know, like this. If you're right-handed and you're deploying it with your thumb, it is about as perfect as it can possibly be. The detent strength is tuned to be exactly what it needs to be to make this movement extremely satisfying and purposeful. It's going to lock out. Really, really nice. We don't have a backspacer. I don't know that this necessarily needs it, though I will admit a backspacer, you know, like a maybe a textured backspacer or something would look really cool. And I'll also admit, this is just a stamped... Um, the clip it actually might also... The clip is also titanium, which they also have extras of on their website I found. I'm tempted to buy one just in case I bend one out, but this is also titanium. Really nice. 
uh, and it's extremely functional. This is nested into the titanium and the screws are recessed and it's deep carry and we have a drop and a slight bill. They've been doing it this way long before I realized that this is my preference, right? I took a quick look back in history and it turns out that's the case. This clip is wonderful. It works extremely well. I do find myself wishing that this had a beautiful milled contoured textured titanium clip, which would undoubtedly increase the price of this thing. It would push this knife well over $400, I believe. Um, it's just, it's not cheap to make something like that. But my God, wouldn't this look good? with a beautiful, like a matching, maybe slightly curved um, pocket clip that's contoured and textured. Does it need that? No, right? But do we need titanium on our knives? Like if we're questioning whether or not we need that pocket clip, there's a whole mess of stuff on this knife that you could question whether or not you need. No, you are in enthusiast territory here. You can lie to yourself and say, oh, you know, every aspect is completely and totally utilitarian and no part of me is an enthusiast and I'm attracted to this specifically for its utilitarian elements. No, you lie into yourself. And that's, but that's, that's fine, right? Sometimes it takes a little bit for people to realize that, right? So it would be really nice to have that pocket clip, but on the flip side, it would, you know, would cost more money. So I really, I mean, these are already a really good price and being made in the United States. So I'm just being kind of a, oh, I wish it was even fancier oh, just for me. You know, I, I don't know if it's really, you know, that's a good idea to come down on that. There is a stop pin, uh, a tiny stop pin located in its usual position. That's fine, right? No shouldering, but it doesn't need it. The lockout is completely solid. Both of these, this one hasn't been, you know, carried and used, but both of them are completely and totally solid. No movement at all. No movement whatsoever. Um, no pivot lash. Very, very smooth on the action. And a nice medium. It's not a very audible click, right? I'm going to check this one for pivot lash as well. Same thing. Very, very smooth. Mine is a little bit, this one's a little bit smoother because I've been, you know, using and carrying it. <laughs> I can't believe that. The, it just throws me that they're so, they're so thin, right? So I just, and, the, and they're on washers. So I just expect that I can get some movement out of them, but no. Uh, and then the blades are, I think this one, see with washers, they kind of have, they kind of mush. So I think I can actually like tip it centered. Yeah, you see that? How about this one? Can it be mushed? Does it even need to be? No, it doesn't. No uh, detent lash either. They're stuck in there in the closed position. Yeah, I think you guys can probably guess. Um, these are extremely recommendable. And even now in hindsight, the fact that also that they offer contoured scales with the lesser materials. Many people will consider the less expensive materials better, right? Because it creates better balance, makes it lighter weight. It's also less expensive, right? That's a, that's a beautiful thing. Um, you, uh, so, oh, geez, I, I, I'm not, sorry, that was an accident. I'm not trying to borrow from Nick Shabazz's thing, but um, it is. It, you can get what you want. They are very accommodating. Um, so, and the availability seems like it's getting better. I'm not going to say you can get exactly what you want right now, but if you wait, you can get what you want, right? If you're patient, I guess is what I should say. Um... Especially now after all the inflation, the fact that you can get something like this, I can't, I double checked. I was like, they really, you can get one of these as low as 210 bucks, which again, if you're new to the knife world, it sounds like a lot of money, right? But if you look into what it really costs to do something like this in the USA, I think that's incredible. It is incredible that they're able to offer them that low. The titanium ones obviously are much more expensive, but I think it's amazing you can even get the titanium ones for $365. These are wonderful, wonderful EDC knives. They are extremely recommendable, extremely. They make fantastic tools, right? But they also have that extra little bit of sauce that makes them appealing to people like me. Right? The weirdos of the knife world. Man, that texturing is just gorgeous on both of these. It's really, really nice. Really precision. Whether you're looking at a less expensive variant or one of these more expensive variants, which I know you guys mean, they gave you that for free. That's why it's it. No, remember, I paid in full for my first one and I have to give one away. So it's still my dollars that went into this. Still my money that went into this. I'm going to continue to, this is going to be a very permanent part of my uh, carry rotation. I, I love this knife. I'm going to con uh, continue to carry it, but I can't recommend these enough. I'm going to give you guys a few links on where you can get them at the retailers that I work at, and I'll also link TRM knives in general 
down in the description. You guys definitely need to check them out. Very, very recommendable knives. They're going to go on my most recommended knives playlist and my favorite knives of all time. I just can't not do it, especially after. I'm so glad they did this because I, I don't know that I ever would have looked back. I don't know that I ever would have given them another chance. Um, but this is just such a <laughs> great night and day, right? I knew that they were, I mean, it's not, it's not fair to say because I love the TRM shadow, right? I'm very happy to find out what level they're able to execute this, what level, the, what level they're able to um, machine titanium because it's really incredible. Boy, this was a long review, 30 minutes. All right. Just wanted to make sure we got the right info out there. Um, I don't know where my leather card went. There it is. No, nope, that's the strop. Well, anyways, <laughs> what happened to it? It's just gone. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody. And have a great day.